when is the last time you've considered where that stuff that comes out of you on a daily basis goes from your house to the outside? If you're like me, not very often. So what happened to me was I had an expensive bill. Actually, not too bad. It was only about $715 to get my septic tank cleaned. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Callis. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to discuss what happens to the waste that, that you produce in your house. There's three things that we're gonna go over today. Then we'll talk about the pros and cons of each. And then we'll talk about some myths of each of them as well. So the first one that we wanna look at is a septic system. Septic system is a waste system that typically is in rural communities. And what that means is that you got a house, and it's called the septic system there. So if this is your house, great drawing, I know, because I'm an artist, out of your house comes a pipe. That pipe with the septic system goes to a septic tank. Now, in my case, I had two tanks. Why'd you stop? Six. So in my case, I have two septic tanks, holding tanks, each about a thousand gallons. That's a lot of stuff, okay? So there's a connector between the two and there's a pipe that you can view from, viewing pipe. That tells you if it's clogged. So from there, what you have is another pipe that leads out to a basket. Now I know this all because of my septic guy. Shout out to uh, Sunset Septic that came out and fixed my problem. He said that in my case, it's about a 50 gallon drum, okay? That sits there and from there, I got a pipe that comes out. And that goes maybe 75 feet and there's another viewing pipe there. So what you got, as you flush the toilet, it goes in here. So what happens in here, right? Rudimentary design, it's not the scale. Got a pipe that comes in, a pipe that comes out. So in my case, I had those two pipes and then the pipe that goes out there. Well, the stuff makes it in through here and it comes down. Now this has some water in it, so there's stuff. So when that waste comes in, boom, goes down. And over time, it breaks down, they call it affluence. Fancy term for, fancy term for wastewater. So what you got then is there's a baffle. This baffle rises and falls based upon how much water's in there. And there's these buckets, these buckets to ensure that crazy solid stuff doesn't go out. So once it gets up over there, it falls down, falls down, falls down, pushes out. Now this tank, same thing. So what happens is this fills up, got that chamber there, there, comes up and it goes out to the system. So now from here, remember it goes to this thing. Now this thing's just like a catch-all. You gotta make sure that nothing crazy gets out into the field. This is the leach field, that's what they call it. And from here, that water, once it gets into here, comes out in this field and there's holes in these pipes so sometimes you get one pipe other times you get multiple pipes and then it comes back together to there that's called the septic system and what happens here if we do a little cross section here i'm going to have to erase my uh, tanks here but if this is your house and this is the the ground that's all underground. And so what happens, these tanks push out and the water goes through the ground, goes down to the water table. So that water becomes, <coughs> that water becomes clear, usable because it's been filtered. 
That's a very, very brief overview of what a septic system does. Now let's move on to the second type of system. The second type of system that we have is a what well, holding tank. The second type of system that we have is called a holding tank. Wow, that's a really hard one, right? Holding tank. Now the holding tank is kind of what it sounds like. It's a tank that it holds. Now a lot of those tanks, so you got the house, ground and there's a tank underneath it goes in there it's kind of like if you were living in an RV and you had a waste collection system this thing gets pretty big 5,000 10,000 I don't know I'm not sure the amount that it goes up to but I have a client they bought a house with a holding tank and they get it pumped out they call it the honey wagon right that's the honey wagon they connect, they pump it out. And what's interesting about that is that there's an alarm inside of your house that lets you know when this tank has maybe 100 gallons left, 200 gallons left, so that you know what has to happen. Pump it out so it doesn't overflow. That's a holding tank. All right, remember we talked about the septic system. The next part is a... All right, we talked about what's called a septic system. And the septic system has a conventional, which I went over. This is what's called a mound system. Now, you've seen a lot of mound system in newer construction homes or homes that had a conventional system fail. They have to go to this mound system. So this is what a mound system looks like. So you get your house, right? flat ground. This pipe though gets pushed out and what you see is a mound in the yard. So if you're driving down the road and you see your neighbor's yard got a big hill in there, it's called the mound system. So essentially what they did is that they took that conventional system and put it on top of the ground. Now there's reasons why they do it. I'm not a professional in this situation. So if you want to know, I'd contact a septic system company. What this conventional mound system does is it got the tanks, right? Just like before. And then it's got the leach field, but it's all inside this mound. So that's a mound system. last thing that we're going to go over as far as the system is what a lot of people are familiar with and they don't even think about it because they don't think about where they flush their stuff to. That's a city sewer, a sewer system. So it's pretty straightforward, but let's talk about it. Got your house, got your pipe, goes down to the street and gets pumped out. Now, let's say there's a sidewalk there. Right at the sidewalk, there's gonna be this little uh, port there. And that's like a viewing hall in case there's a problem on your lateral. So what happens, you flush the toilet, do the laundry, whatever, it's gonna pump out there. And it'll go straight to the city and the city will take it to be processed to make it better water again, gray water. Now, that take the gray water, this will be pumped out to the city and that city will refine it water filtration plants sewer plants they take care of that stuff and make the water good again now the other thing that you have on this house could be not all the times is a storm lateral now that storm lateral takes water from your gutters goes straight into that and then it pushes it out 
that city sewer. Straightforward, isn't it? All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of each system. Now, talked about the septic system. We're gonna say it's a conventional system and a mountain system, okay? So septic slash mound. Pros, well, you pay no sewer bill. That's pretty cool. You don't have to pay the city for your waste. Pro, it's all on you. Pro, replacement costs Pro, septic to mound system. It allows you to build in a rural area. Build where you want. Now, obviously, you got to abide by the rules of your local um, municipalities, whether it's the county or the city or the state. They have all different regulations. You got to consult that first. So there's a good three, three pros. Let's talk about cons, okay? The cons of the septic system. Well, you have to maintain it. So you maintain it by pumping it out and having someone inspect it. Now, I live in the village of Waukesha and they require me to do it by the county every two to three years, pump it out, they inspect it and determine that it's good to go. So you gotta maintain it. That could be a con. Um, repairs. Even if you do everything right with a septic system, you may have to repair it. Just like what happened to me yesterday. I had a clog. I warn my kids, we don't flush anything except two-ply toilet paper that's septic safe. And that's it. And then whatever stuff we flush because of what we flush. That cost me 710 bucks. Not that bad though, right? 710. The other thing, maybe could be a con, aesthetic. We're gonna spell it wrong. For all of you, it's spelled wrong, okay? Aesthetic, um, especially with the mound system. Got a big hump in your yard. With a conventional system, you're gonna have a pipe and big round cement viewing platform that they pull up to get inside that tank. So aesthetically, mm, a lot to be desired for some people. It's another con. Another kind of a septic system, well, I don't know. I don't know another kind of septic system. If you guys know of one, let me know. Let's talk about now pros and cons of the holding tank. Pro of the holding tank is that once you install it, it's installed. Not much can go wrong because they just pump it out. It's a big, big container. So maintenance, not too huge. What else? Well, again, you're not paying for that sewer. No yearly payment. A 
What's another one? Well, you can build where you want to because a lot of the times holding tanks are used by lakes because you can't put in a septic system if you're close to the lake. I had a client in uh, McGuanago, he had a home that he bought on a lake and the septic system failed. So the only opportunity for him to still inhabit the house was to do a holding tank and he did it, paid for it. I think back then it was about 18,000 bucks. So that's what he did, worked out well. Now let's talk about the cons. All right, cons. Well, another one, aesthetics, right? We're gonna just scribble that so you can't tell that I misspelled it. Aesthetics, again, you got a big tank. Now it's not as huge as you think because it's below ground, but you got that portal that they gotta suck out, okay? The other thing, um, con-wise, typically with the two clients that I know that have holding tanks, they do it about every three months they pump. And that pumping costs a couple hundred, three hundred dollars. So there's an expense. That's a con. Lastly, on the holding tank, one of the cons is that well, you should be concerned how often you use the water because that's going to affect how quickly it gets full. Now let's talk about city sewer pros and cons. Now this is an interesting one. Well, number one, the pro could be a con. You're in the city. Right? So you're in an urban environment. The other thing is you could have backups. Now, I grew up in the city of Milwaukee, West Dallas, and occasionally when the floods came, remember we had that sewer lateral? Those things would back up and fill people's houses. I know like in Whitefish Bay, there were homes that had backups where Gosh, six, eight feet of water in the basement. Pretty disgusting because that water mixes with, well, wastewater. So kind of gross. So you could get the backups. That's a con. Well, what's the other con? Costly to repair. What do you mean by that? Well, I had a client in West Dallas, in a house that was about 70 years old. Now what they did back then is they just threw the lateral out, made out of cast iron, and over time, cast iron, well, it's metal. It will rust, it will corrode, it'll shrink, it'll break. And so what happened to him is he actually had a failure, and remember, that pipe goes out and you own it from the house to the road where it connects and that viewing pipe. Now what happened is it broke right there about 120 feet out. And to replace that line, it was gonna be about $12,000, $12,000. Now there is a company out there called uh, Sewer Ninjas. Eric Olvog, great guy, created this company where you don't have to replace it. They can go and redo it. Saves customers a lot of money. So that could be a con there too. What else could be a con? Well, the city came back a number of years ago and remember that gutter thing there? They said, do not tie in to the sewer level for the rainwater. So you couldn't use your gutters to that. You want them all pulled out because it's causing too much problem. The waste system, Jones Island in Milwaukee, was overwhelmed and it backed up and it caused really bad things to happen to Lake Michigan. You could see the clouds, E. coli, disgusting. So that's a, a con there. Now let's talk about the pros, okay? Now with the city, The city, 
some benefits though, right? Number one, uh, you have flushability. What did I mean by that? Well, here's the deal. City of Milwaukee, big campaign as of late, three Ps, only flush those three Ps. Well, you know, one comes out the back, one comes out the front, and the other's paper. So those are the three Ps. Because what was happening is everyone was flushing everything because it made sense. Right? So flushability, you can do that. Number two is cost. It's on your sewer bill, right? Lived in Milwaukee, I get a water and sewer bill. The water bill is typically a lot of money. The sewer bill, not much. Minimal cost. And ownership, the only thing that can really go wrong is that pipe going out to the street. So that's pretty cool, pretty simple, pretty easy, okay? So if you don't mind being in the city, you like the city, the sewer, pretty much the only option that you have and when you get out in more rural communities like where I live, we have city water in some areas with city sewer. We have septic systems. We have mountain systems. We have holding tanks. And you know what? There's a whole bunch of other systems that they've come up with over the years. And I'm not an expert, so I don't know what they are. I'm just covering the basics here, okay? All right, let's cover myths. This is very interesting. Let's go first to the city, the city sewer. Myth one. Rats live there. Yeah, really. People think that rats live in the sewer and that they can get up into your house. And the fact is they can't, okay? Because they're too big, they're too small. They, why can't rats get in your house? You got a cover on it. There's no reason for them to go there. But rats do live in the main sewer areas that don't have water, but what we're talking about is areas that have water. What's another myth of city? Well, flushability. Just talked about that. Flushability, the city is really detracting people from using the toilets, the sinks, as the way to get rid of everything. They say, nope, only do the three Ps again. So you don't have flushability anymore. Makes sense. Number three myth of city is no cost. Well, as we know, if you own a home, there is a cost to the sewer. It's minimal, but there is a cost. Number three, or I'm sorry, number four, no maintenance. No maintenance. So that is not true. There is maintenance. If you talk to some of your neighbors that live in the city, they got to grow to root that line because trees will grow their roots into that lateral. And the other maintenance is you want to make sure that you have a proper working sump pump. That's for the city sewer as well, right? So there is some maintenance, not overall, a lot, but maintenance nonetheless. Holding tank myth. Well, can't say that I know many of any. Holding tank myth. 
can't really say that I know many because they're kind of rare. So if you know any myths about a holding tank or if you heard any bad war stories and they're wrong, let me know because I'd like to put some in there. Septic myths, here we go. There's a whole bunch of them. First one, costly to repair. Yes and no, here's the deal with septic systems. They can be costly to repair if it completely fails, which goes into another myth. When someone says that I have a failed septic system, what does that mean? Well, unless if you actually have a certified septic person out here to determine what's failed doesn't necessarily mean that all things fail. One other thing that I thought was interesting about a septic system is there's many different parts that can fail. Remember we talked about that piece that comes out from the house to the tank and from the tank to that other box these things can fail. It's probably under $1,000 to fix. Now the pipe that goes out to the ground, that can fail as well. And what I was told yesterday is if it fails, meaning it gets clogged up and you can't fix it, it's only about $1,500 to replace, which isn't that bad. Uh, the one thing that you do hear about septics that's not a myth, okay, not a myth, is that if the field is oversaturated, it's very costly. That is true. When it's oversaturated, what that means is that the, the soil no longer absorbs the water. It's not doing its job. And that can be costly about $20,000. Ouch. Number two, flushability. A lot of people say you can't flush anything except well, the three Ps. That is true, yes and no. What they have determined is that you can flush toilet paper, as long as it's not the really thick toilet paper. You can use the garbage disposal. A lot of people think you can't use the garbage disposal because it's food and it'll get clogged up. You can do that, okay? Uh, so you can flush, but you have to be very focused on what you're flushing. So no Q-tips, no feminine products, no other products. You know what I'm talking about. You don't want to flush those anyway with any system. What's another bit? That's it. That's all I got. Two. Thanks for joining me today. Excited to talk to you about septic systems and what we should do in the future is talk to Eric over at Sewer Ninjas and see exactly what those repairs look like for city sewer laterals, city sewer laterals. Because if you live in the city, like most people, that could be a common problem. If you have any questions, concerns, or you have better myths than I had, let me know, because I want to put them up here, okay? Thanks again, Dan Callis, Callis Real Estate, Keller Williams Realty. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.